Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, respected viewers. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you. Welcome to the 18th episode of the Treaties of Rights series. Today we will discuss the right of the caller to prayer. Regarding this, Imam Sajjad Zain al-Abidin, Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, has said, and the right of your caller to prayer is that you should know that he is the one reminding you of your Lord and is calling you to your good fortune and is your greatest helper in fulfilling an obligation that God has made incumbent upon you. Therefore, thank him for that, just as you thank one who does some good to you. And if you are upset with him at home due to this, you should not accuse him for this, since his act is for God. And you should know that he is the one of the blessings of God for you. There is no doubt about that. Then you should kindly treat God's blessing by praising God for him under all circumstances and there is no power but in God. Calling to prayer is probably the most sacred job or duty anyone can possess. They remind us of what are most important, what we were born to do, and our duties towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this individual who calls us to prayer, don't they have rights incumbent upon us? Obviously they do, and that is for the following reasons. The first reason is that he is the one who reminds us of our Lord. The second reason is that he is the one who unites us to get the benefits that we can derive from praying. And finally, the third reason being that he is our best assistant in fulfilling a mandatory duty. Therefore, we must thank him in such a way that we thank one who does good to us. If we are upset with him, we should not accuse him since his act is for the sake of God. We should know that he is one of God's blessings. We should treat him with kindness and be grateful to him. Materialistic forces draw us away from God. It is the one who calls us to prayer, who reminds us of the Lord. He helps save us from indulging in materialistic pleasures. He assists us towards performing the prayer that helps us prosper. A high value has been recorded for the one who calls to prayer in his traditions and books and on Islamic jurisprudence. Few have been promised the rewards that those who call the people to prayer have been promised. What does the Adhan mean? Does it have a specific meaning? And is it mentioned in the Holy Quran? What is the history behind Adhan? And what does the jurisprudence say regarding this matter? Adhan in Arabic means announcement. Considering the following verse, and an announcement from God and His Apostle, the Holy Quran and Tawbah chapter 9 verse 3. The caller to prayer loudly announces that it is time to pray. We read in the following verse, But a crier shall proclaim between them. The Holy Quran Al-Araf chapter 7 verse 44. The decree to call for prayers was revealed in the first year of the immigration of the noble prophet to Medina. Other dates are also recorded. The need for it became apparent when the number of Muslims became so many that it was hard for them all to know when to pray. They talked to each other and decided to establish a sign indicating that it is time to pray. Some just some suggested to ring a bell, but the Prophet did not agree since this was a Christian practice. Some suggested the use of a horn, but the Prophet did not agree since this was a Jewish practice. Some suggested playing on the tambourine, but the Prophet said that this was a Roman practice. Others suggested using fire, but the Prophet said this was a practice of the Magaians. Some suggested raising a flag, but the Prophet did not say anything. Therefore, they did not settle on anything specific. Gabriel descended when the Prophet was in Ali's house and revealed the decree for the call to prayer. Saduq narrated in Man la al Faqih, Mansur ibn Hazim, quoted on the authority of Maman Sadiq, peace and blessings be upon him, Gabriel descended to the Prophet of God, peace and blessings be upon him, in pure progeny, when he was sleeping in Ali's house. Gabriel recited the Adhan and the Iqama. Then the Prophet said, O oh Ali, did you hear that? He said, O oh Prophet of God, yes. Then the Prophet said, Did you memorize it? Oh, Imam Ali, peace be upon him, said, Yes. Then the Prophet said, Then teach it to Bilal. Then Ali taught it to Bilal. It is recommended for men and women to say the Adhan and Qama before they pray. It has been quoted on the authority of Al Mashur, as quoted by many others, that it is recommended to say the Adhan and Qama. It is quoted in the books of Al Jumal and its commentary. Al Muqna'a, Al Nahayat, Al Mabsut, Al Wasila, Al Mufid Ahkams, Al Nisa, that is mandatory for men to say the Adhan and Qama in congregational prayers. With that said, there are several instances where it doesn't have to be read. The first instance is for the afternoon Friday prayer. Once it is said, write either the noon prayer or the Friday prayer. The second instance is for the afternoon prayer on the day of Arafah. 
if it is said right after the noon prayer. The third instance is for the night prayer on the day of the celebration of the sacrifice. If it is said right after the evening prayer. The fourth instance is during the afternoon prayer or the night prayer of a mustahada woman who must say them right after the noon or evening prayer. The last and fifth instance is during the afternoon or the night prayer of one who cannot control his urination or bowel movement. In the instances mentioned earlier, there is no need to say the adhan if the prayers are said right one after the other or shortly thereafter. Certain conditions have been stated by the jurisprudence for the adhan and iqama. Time for a quick break. We will explain these conditions when we come back. Stay tuned. First, one must have the intention to say the adhan or an iqama from the start to the end. Therefore, if one says them without intending to approach God, it is not accepted of him. Secondly, the one who says the adhan and the iqama must have faith. However, it is not required for the one who says the call to prayer to be mature, especially when it is used an announcement. However, all the jurisprudence require that the one who says the call to prayer as an announcement should be a man. It is also required that the one who says the call to prayer for men should be a man. Thirdly, adhan and qama must be said in order. Fourthly, there must be proper continuity of expression in between the parts of the adhan. Finally, the call to prayer should be said using correct Arabic. With that said, there are also instances where jurisprudence have recommended the adhan to be read. Firstly, when a child is born, it is good to say the adhan in his right ear and the iqama in his left ear. Secondly, it is recommended to say the adhan in the ear of one who has not had any meat for 40 days. Now, as us, Shias stress the importance of adhan and iqama and view it as highly recommended. Some jurisprudence even consider them to be mandatory for men in congregational prayers. As for Sunni's jurisprudence, Malik and Abu Hanifa agree with the Shia and say that adhan and iqama are good in all prayers, whether at home or on a trip, whether said in person or in congregation. They consider that there are no cases in which it is mandatory to say the adhan or iqama. However, Ahmad ibn Hanbal as well as the Shafi'iyya and Malikiyya have said that the adhan and the iqama are mandatory as much as necessary. So we can see that there is a difference between Sunnis and themselves. Imam Rada, peace and blessings be upon him, has a beautiful philosophy behind adhan. The late Saduq quoted on the authority of Imam Rada, peace be upon him. In fact, the people were ordered to say the call to prayer for many reasons, among which we can mention to remind those who might have forgotten to pray, to awaken their ignorant ones, to recognize those who are ignorant when it is time to pray. The one who calls to prayer invites the people to worship God through his call to prayer. He makes the people more inclined to pray and confess to the unity of God. He publicizes his own faith and submission and reminds those who have forgotten. The one who calls to prayer starts by glorifying God and ends by testifying to his unity. Each part is repeated twice in order to affect the person who hears it. If he does not notice it the first time, he will recognize it the second time it is recited. Since the testifying to the unity of God and the Prophet of Muhammad are the foundations of our faith, they are repeated twice. Thus, when one testifies twice to the unity of God and the prophethood of Muhammad, he has wholeheartedly testified to all the pillars of faith. The next part of the Adhan is the invitation to pray, as this is its main purpose. Thus, this is the call to prosperity and good deeds. And the Adhan ends in the name of Allah, as it is started with. Obviously, reciting Adhan has its own reward from Allah. Muawiyah bin Wahhab quoted on the authority of Mama Sadiq, on the authority of God's Prophet, whoever performs the call to prayer in one of the Muslim towns for one year, heaven is incumbent on him. Sulaiman bin Ja'far quoted on the authority of his father that once when a man from Sham went to see Imam Sadiq, peace be upon him, the Imam told him that Bilal is the first person to go to heaven. 
the man asked the reason. The Imam said because he was the first one to say the call to prayer. In another tradition, Jabir Ja'far quoted on the authority of Imam al-Baqar that God's Prophet said, The one who calls to prayer seeking a reward from God is like one who has drawn his sword in the way of God and is fighting in between the rows. Regarding this matter, Imam Ali, the commander of the faithful, peace and blessings be upon him, has said, those who say the call to prayer will be raised as chiefs on the day of resurrection. The late Saduq quoted on the authority of Manafi tradition, on the authority of Jafar ibn Muhammad, on the authority of his father, on the authority of God's prophet, peace be upon him, and his pure progeny, God the High will grant the reward of 40,000 martyrs and 40,000 voracious ones to whoever says the call to prayer for the sake of God. Due to such a person, 40,000 sinners from my nation should be allowed into heaven. Indeed, when the one who says the call to prayer testifies to the unity of God, 70,000 angels will send greetings to him and seek God's forgiveness for him. They will be in the shade of the Lord's throne on the resurrection day until God finishes the reckoning of all people. 40,000 angels will record the reward of his testifying to the prophethood of Muhammad. With that, we can clearly conclude that Adhan has its own special reward that no other deed will reach. We have reached the end of this episode. Stay tuned for another episode on the Treaties of Rights. Thank you all for watching and may Allah hasten the reappearance of our beloved Imam Mahdi. Peace and blessings be upon him. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.